Hello, hello and welcome boys and girls, this time I'm playing FFA 12 as Daido in a Civ Players League for a multiplayer game we're using better balanced game and better balanced mods. I'm starting on a quite good location with a 2 to bay, 3 to banana, some stone and fish. As an able Civ you usually opens with a scout builder, but we have no any good reef fish around and I'm thinking maybe I should go for a mining. But because there is no sword improvement I'm sticking with an idea of making settler right after scout. To the north of Trier I discovered quite poor territory but with an awesome turtles. I'm seeking for god of the sea pantheon so extra face and so rape also got used. Another step forward and we find out that there is two turtles instead of one. That's an amazing news especially for a non-fresh city. If you can improve to tides that grants you housing you'll reach level 4 city way faster. And of course I changed my plans and built builders right after the first settler. Bite out third ring turtle and improve it. It turned out Sidon is an amazing city. I found really a couple of turn earlier and with its help could enact God of the Sea Pantheon. I was thinking about new Goddess of the Tide Pantheon, but decided not to take it because of the Oakland I found to the south. I have to be honest, my surroundings is not that great a starting position. I have to improve almost every single tile to make it profitable. And without God of the Sea I could have even worse tempo. Check Inuk. Besides 3-1 base it has nothing. I will have to buy our tiles and improve them. And there is no better spots around in a reasonable distance. Turn 24 discovered early empowered civic. I decided to keep urban planning so I can finish my current tasks. And of course, first governor is Magnus, so I can use Magnus' internal strategy. This strategy will help me to boost cities as I look with the trade roads. Because it's 12 players map, you have to invest in scouting. Got two Byrimas, built to scout and never returned with my warrior in my attempt to find someone to trade with. Tier 26 finally finished monument in Troy and starting production of settlers. As usual, capital and second city will produce settler each. Turn 30, both settlers are done and I'm constructing lighthouses to increase trade rate capacity and of course government plaza in a Magnus city. I already promoted Magnus and internal trade roads should generate 4 food and 5 production each. Also find Russia to the north and Canada to the south of Phoenician Empire. I hope we'll be good friends because I have no other friends beside them. By CPL rules you can have more than 2 friends, which is similar to life. After Governor Flaza finished, got extra Governor title and pick Maksha, so I can generate extra culture and reach Fio faster. Found another coastal city this next to a reef fish. It literally has no good tiles and now I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't settle there. From another hand, there is no good spot for a city which could construct Gotham. Discovered new government type to 34 and choose oligarchy. We might need a legacy in a possible combat battle in the future. So we must construct tier 1 government plaza building which is audience chamber this time as soon as possible so we can switch to a better government type which is classical republic. Turn 35 good quality city finally settled it's called Ugarit. Fight out silk immediately and locked it so I can grow my borders faster. And of course started construction Cuthon immediately. Turn 36, discovered wheel and constructing chariot in my attempt to finish Oakland's quest. Because of Canadian money, I had to discover mysticism to seize Oakland. It might affect the district discount, but I think it's more profitable to have extra production on its sea tiles. Also this turn finished Audit's chamber and switched to Classic Republic. Maybe I should went for Ancestral Hole, because now I am realized that map was extremely big and I had a lot of place to settle non-naval cities. But because my second and third city had no fresh water, as usually I decided to boost them with the governors. After I finished lighthouses and traders to boost existing cities, constructing even more settlers. And of course replacing campuses as soon as my cities reached 4 pops. When settlers are ready, come back to lighthouses construction. So I can have more traders for newly founded cities. It is wise to use veterans policy card to boost harbor buildings construction speed. That is why I'm discovering military training civics now. 
With the help of Magnus Chops, I was trying to construct mausoleum in Halicarnassus, but lost it. And now focusing on the Great Lighthouse. Also inside and constructing the Colossus. I built all my unique units and buildings to reach classical era golden age. And now must accumulate extra points to achieve the second one. Turn 48 discovered feudalism. Not the best feud timings, I have to be honest. As usual, with discovering feudalism, you're making the builder wave, which I'm doing now. Delayed production in almost every city to produce five charged builders. And if it's possible, we'll buy a few of it before the majority of builders pop out. With the help of power of full charged builders, I can finally transform Ainug in something good. As always, I haven't paid attention for a great person, but was able to get some hair somehow. He will boost our possible trade routes with allies and grants extra trade route capacity. Finished civil service turn 54 and thought I was late for an alliance. But it appears that my friends, Russia and Canada, haven't even discovered civil service yet. And I was thinking that I can trade with Canada externals and ready for doing so, that is why I started externals already. But this boy have outsmarted me. It looks like he haven't even aimed for civil service. He was rushing mounties, skipping every single other civics and somehow was able to skip civil service. But at this turn I wasn't realizing that he was doing so and wasted good amount of traders for almost nothing. Also I was panicking that I might not get golden and went for divine right. Even though it was quite obvious that I can't enact new government time before era shift. Turn 57, I met Cree, got era score for that. Chopped plus 4 campus, got 3 more era score. And Lady at Auckland. All these actions helped me accumulate 55 era score in total and I secured Golden Age. Once again I'm desperately checking, can Anada make an alliance? And once again to my disappointment he's not. I'm losing about 30 signs per turn because of it. Turn 58, new era starts and I'm taking paintbrush and voice because I'm sure that Canada will get alliance in a couple of turns. And I wasn't quite sure that my harbors have nice adjacency bonus. It appears I was wrong and they got about 30 adjacency bonus in total. Which means I'm losing 60 cents per turn because of a wrong golden age and 30 more because Canada have no alliance. This is the biggest mistake of the game and it leads to a more dramatic consequences. I lost all hopes in making alliance with Canada so decided to switch my attention toward Russian trade roads. It was partially naval and I asked Russia to found port city. He agreed and promised to discover civil service as soon as possible. Unfortunately, he had only 30 culture per turn, so I had to wait for a while. Also, I was trying to find naval trade road to Canada, but all my traders refused to sail there. Globally, I'm about to discover mass production and will construct shipyard in every single city. I have to make another colonization wave before that happens. Otherwise, my new cities will be hardly delayed. Also, I have dilemma with universities. Because of lack of science, I must construct them now, otherwise I won't have any science at all. So I'm trying to achieve impossible and making three different actions at the same time. Trying to construct settlers, universities and harbors. Turn 65, we lost host, which affects our game later. But for now, I'm trying to keep up with the science income. But as you can see, I have not enough campuses constructed. Even though I discovered mass production still haven't finished universities in most cities. And because I enacted a tier 2 government too late, still working on a foreign ministry in a capital. Also, to boost external trade routes value, I constructed Diplocuartal in Toya. Finally finished campuses and discovered enlightenment. It helped, but not that much. Even with the Merchant Republic, I still have not enough policy card slots. And because of low tempo, partially cost of poor trading partners, I'm hopelessly behind. Even if I settle five more cities, I won't have enough time to reach top starts boys. Then 72 finally have alliance with both Russia and Canada. 
To be honest, trade roads are not that good and most of them are land trade roads. 1076 discovered industrialization and civil engineering. Now I can construct some factories and will use public forks policy card for builders production. To my surprise, I have very low improved tiles number and I can't even understand how that even happened. I want to believe it's all because of low amount production I had early game. Or maybe poor trade roads. Check this out. I could have better trade roads with India, who is not even my ally. Oh well, as always you can whine about something all day or you can do something about it. And my plan simple, as always, I will spam more cities to generate more score points. So I can have a fourth place in the leaderboard. But unfortunately my plans were destined to fail. Because we lost initial host and couple of players, everyone somehow was bored to play this game. Even those guys who was way ahead of everyone kinda want to finish it. I was disappointed in my gameplay and had no will to continue this game. Also Norway was planning to invade me, so I was happy that game ended prematurely, even though I lost 4th place and finished 5th one. In conclusion I want to say that I should have built campuses earlier, also I should use Magnus internals a bit longer. And of course I have to work on a builder management. Thanks a lot for watching, hope you found this video entertaining. Please like, leave comment, share and subscribe, even though we couldn't finish this game. Sending you positive vibes, much love, have a nice day.